This time on Thrift Minis, I'm going to show you how to make this medieval skull tower out of cheap and reused materials. So, in this case it's actually a dice tower I made for a friend, but you can use the same principles to make terrain for it. It doesn't have to be a dice tower. So you see what I started with was this cardboard coffee can. And that's going to be the basic shape of my tower. And then of course there's this plastic skull. And I got this plastic skull in a bag from uh, a dollar store around Halloween. I probably got eight or ten in a bag for a dollar. So what I'm going to start by doing is cutting the back off this skull. And then what I do, I want to remove the bottom jawbone. So I want an opening in the front of the tower kind of like this mouth where the dice roll out. Maybe you have a gatehouse or something, you're building a fantasy fortress and um, you could do a skull the same way. It's like a Castle Grey skull kind of thing like He-Man. So I'm just, without measuring, I'm just giving an approximation of where I think the opening should be and where the skull is going to be. And I just use a box cutter to carve that out. Alright, so like anything plastic, I want to get rid of these seam lines and I want to prep the plastic for paint. Plastic really does not like paint. So I'm using some light sandpaper and a nail file and I'm just cleaning up the edges so that glue and paint are going to stick better. Okay, here is some 5mm foam board and what I want to do is I'm going to wrap that can in foam board so that I can do my stones with the foam. So I cut a long enough strip to wrap around the can. And then I need to remove the paper. You may have foam board that doesn't have paper on it. The easiest thing to do is soak it in hot water. In this case I didn't so I had to peel at it several times. But I eventually got most of that paper off. So what I'm going to do is mark and trim off the excess there. Just using a piece of scrap as a straight edge. I really don't do any specific measuring throughout this whole project. I'm just kind of uh, lining things up, testing them, drawing a line, cutting, trying again. So what I did to attach the foam to this coffee can was I used hot glue and then in between a layer of hot glue I put a layer of something like white glue and then I'd go back with hot glue again. And the hot glue will hold it immediately and then that white glue or that PVA glue will give it strength over time. It takes a little bit of time to set up but between those two you should have a really solid adhesion. And then any excess, you just trim it with a razor. Alright, so I used some painter's tape. I even recycle painter's tape to hold that in place while all the glue dries. And then I cut out the little mouth under that skull. I'm just cleaning the glue up there. So what I did was I used a bunch of PVA glue and then I went over with hot glue and I'm going to affix the tower to an MDF base. This MDF is just left over from another project and it seemed about the right size. Then I just go around the can 
and I add some more hot glue to make sure it stays fixed. All right, so now I'm gonna affix the skull with hot glue. If you have a high temp hot glue gun, this might melt your foam a little bit too much, but I'm just using a little low temp hot glue gun and it seems to be all right. You wanna hold it in place until the hot glue is done drying. So I want kind of a ramp at the bottom for when the dice roll out. So I'm taking this scrap piece of foam and I'm just carving it at an angle. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's gonna be covered up. You'll see here momentarily. So I'm cutting to make sure that it fits inside the can. And then I add some hot glue and glue it inside. And I'm making sure the ramp is facing out towards that opening. So since that glue on the foam board on the outside is dried, I'm gonna go around and pull that painter's tape off. And if it still sticks, I'll just stick it to the wall and use it for another project. I can either mask something with it or hold something down with it. Now I'm going around the top and I'm making sure that the foam board is stuck to it with hot glue. So I've traced a circle using the top of the can and this is gonna be my smooth ramp at the bottom so the dice can fall out of that doorway. Just shove it down in there and make sure it fits. And then I wanna make sure there's a smooth transition from that ramp down to this open area where the dice are gonna come out. So I just fill that gap with some hot glue. Then I went around the edges with hot glue and white glue to make sure that ramp is fixed in there. Now I have some half inch pieces of XPS foam from another project. And what I'm gonna do is create a uh, walled area for the dice to go into. So I just roughly trim those and put some hot glue on them and affix them there. And I go around to three sides and I do the same thing. As far as the stone, it's what it looks like. You go around with a ballpoint pin and you draw those field stones. It takes a while, but it's worth it in the end. Now I'm gonna make some rough bricks. So I'm taking scraps of five millimeter craft foam and I'm slicing bricks, probably about a quarter inch to half inch wide. And then these are some leftovers from another project. I cut some windows out of a building and these are just free detail. So I wanna texture this foam that I'm using. So I'm gonna go around with a rock and press in some of the stones and impart some of that texture on there. And I'm not doing it over the whole thing. I'm just doing the rock in some places. Then I'm gonna go around the whole thing over all the foam with crushed tin foil. And that'll help give a rocky texture to those field stones. And you can see on that half inch foam, I cut a few pieces off to make the rocks more interesting. And I'm just putting some rocky texture on that with tin foil. And then I do the same thing with the little bricks that I've cut out. So what I've done is at quarter intervals, I'm putting these shape pieces that used to be window pieces from another project. And it's gonna help make the tower look a little more interesting. Then on my bricks, I'm just gonna go around the top. I wanna cover up that metal seam of that coffee can. 
and I'm just going to keep going all the way around with different bricks, covering it up. Stack them on top of each other. Now I'm going to cut a piece of foam to make the ramp at the top for the dice to fall down. So the dice are going to fall towards the back of the tower, then they're going to roll out the front of the tower. So I'm just dry fitting this piece right now. What I realize is the piece is going to be a little bit too big for dice to fit through there. So I end up pulling that piece out and then I just trace the top of a jar to cut this arch shape. And then I'm going to glue it in the foam side up. And I put a little rectangle of foam in the back just to cover up some of the coffee can cardboard, make it look a little bit more like stone, make it look a little thicker. All right, so I want to make some rocks around the back of the tower and I have these pieces of cork left over from other projects. These are probably about 10 millimeters thick. And I'm just going to hot glue these pieces of cork to the back and stack them up, try to make them look like rocks. And this will help cover up gaps and hot glue. I do that on the inside there too. All right, so looking at this tower, I decided I wanted a little bit more detail on it. I wanted some windows or some arrow slits. I just took some spare bricks and hot glued them there. And then I went back with a pin and I carved some more brick texture into them. Okay, so we're gonna use some of this drywall spackle to fill some of these gaps. And I just water it down. I wanna make sure that ramp works well. And I want to cover that hot glue texture. Next, I'm going to go around the top and fill some of those gaps with the same plaster. I'm not trying to totally cover up the bricks, but I'm just trying to fill some of the gaps and make it look like mortar or something. So you can see all that drywall plaster is dry now. And my next step will be going around and cleaning up all the edges with some light sandpaper. I'm going around the top, cleaning up any of the drywall compound that's sticking out too much. And I'm cleaning up the edges of the foam. Alright, so now I want to add all my sand and little rocks. So I'm going to take this wood glue, 
So I'm just using the lid of that original coffee can to mix some water with that wood glue and spread it out in that area where the dice will roll into. And this is just a mix of fine sand and some tiny little rocks. I'm gonna do the same thing around the back. Anywhere where there's plaster, I'm gonna cover it with some wood glue and then cover that with sand. And all the sand is gonna give us interesting texture and make it look realistic when we're done. All right, I think that part looks pretty good. So for the next part, we wanna seal all that sand down. So I'm gonna use my scenic glue, which is just watered down white glue with a little bit of dish soap. And I'm just gonna squirt that around. I wanna cover up all the plaster and all the sand. And you can go in with an old brush and spread that around if you want to. So we let that dry and now I want to protect all the foam. So I'm going to go around with a mixture of Mod Podge and dark brown paint. I'm covering all the brick texture and any of the exposed plaster. So we're going to let that sit and dry. And just a reminder, if you like this kind of video, please like and subscribe. Okay, so we've covered the model with black Krylon spray paint and with a highlight of cheap white spray paint from above. This is my standard basing technique for just about everything. So first thing we're going to do is get some black craft paint and go on the inside and paint all of that black. So I had been testing with the dice several times and I had no problems, but after I base coated the miniature and had all the sand on, the dice did not want to come out of that doorway there. So I had to make a modification. I just went in with a razor and cut that mouth a bit wider. And it's really not a hard fix. We just go back with some of that drywall compound and cover up those rough edges. And we don't need to spray those with spray paint again. The drywall should be pretty porous and take paint well. The main purpose for the base coat of Krylon spray paint was because of that plastic skull. It really needs a good base coat or that paint will scratch off. I find it helps if I water down some of that drywall compound and it makes it thinner and easier to work with. I just usually dip the trowel in some water then touch the drywall compound and then I can move it around. So I remembered I wanted to do some horns on that skull. This is just some air dry clay from the dollar store. And I'm just gonna work it to try to get some of the cracks out of it. And just shape some little cone shapes that I can twist and make some horns. Here I've just got a little clay sculpting tool. Right. Then I go in after that clay is dry and I use some drywall compound again and I just fill any gaps with that and smooth out the surface of the clay. Alright, now we're going to use a medium gray and cover all the rocks with medium gray and the skull and the horns. I'm going to go ahead and get the bricks and the ramp at the top of the tower. Then I use a burnt umber, which is a dark brown, in that area where the dice are going to roll out.
it's good to make a model so it's not just all gray. So while I have the burnt umber out, I'm gonna go and do some underpainting. So a few of these rocks, I'm gonna go around and paint dark brown. Again, this feels a little tedious, but it's worth it. After that, I took a coffee latte color and I did the same thing. It looks pretty cartoony now, but it's going to look good later. So this is what the tower looks like once those parts are dry. I go back with a black wash, just watered down black paint, and I wash some of the areas. Now when all that's dry, I'm going to use a light gray, in this case it's steel gray, by Folk Art. And I'm just going to go around with a makeup brush and dry brush anything that looks like stone. And I go ahead and dry brush that dirt area in the front. And you can already see that undercoating gives some variety to the rocks. Okay, now here's the secret to making it look really real. I've got some tan tile grout and I've put it in a salt shaker so I can use it for hobby purposes a little easier. And I'm just going to mix it in this dish with some tap water and make a thin slurry. Now when you mix up this slurry, don't use a paintbrush that you like. This is just kind of a junk paintbrush that I use for things like glue and things like this tile grout mix. So you see I've got this thin slurry and I'm just going to paint all the stone on the model with this tile grout mixture. You see it's not thick, it's pretty runny. All right, when that's dry, it looks really dusty, but we're not done. So this next step, you might want to do it outside, but I took a dry paintbrush, no water on it at all, and I went around and I tried to get all the tile grout off the high areas, and I'm leaving it in the spaces in between those stones so it looks like actual mortar. All right, so when that's done, I'm gonna take my black wash and I'm gonna go around and I'm not going to wash the whole model with black wash, but I'm going into some of the areas, little pockets in the skull, under the horns and little corners. What I'm doing is I'm trying to find areas in real life that might be more shaded and might hold more water after it rains and leave little water stains. You see how dry that tile grout is. It just sucks up that water. And I'm just doing some little spots all around, just random little spots and little spots under the windows. I'm going to put it around the stones at the back there. Some streaking, just like water's running down it. Molds are starting to grow and mildew's growing on it. You can see inside those windows, I just painted that with black paint. Okay, we're almost done. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of scenic glue and I'm gonna mix it with some Athonian camo shade, which is just kind of a green wash. And I'm gonna mix that with some fine flock from Woodland Scenics. And I'm gonna make sort of, it's like a moss paste. So I'm gonna go around the model and just stipple a few spots to make it look like an overgrown ruin. At this point, I just added a few grass tufts by Army Painter and the model's done. So like I said, you don't have to do a dice tower. You can use these same techniques doing other terrain. If you wanna build a castle or you're building some sort of uh, stone walls or something like that. 
I want to thank everybody for watching and thank you to all my new subscribers. The channel has really blown up lately with my last video. And if you like this sort of thing and you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.